a new unit in your textbook, the adjustment domain. So, um, for the most part of the semester, we've been talking about normal psychological processes and uh, just normal aspects of personality. <coughs> but uh, in today's class, and in the adjustment domain in general, we're going to talk about uh, some problems that people have that stem from their personality. Uh, we'll talk about more general problems with stress and health that result from personality today. And then on, um, we're actually only going to spend one day on this chapter. And then when we get back from Thanksgiving break, we're going to talk about personality disorders. Uh, and we'll spend two days on that. So we, we actually only have four lectures left in here. So, uh, and that's winding down. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. A person with a Machiavellian um, complex, um, would they almost always steal if you set them up? If you put something there, would they almost always take it? Um, I don't want to say that they would always or almost always do anything. They would be more likely to uh, to steal something, probably, uh, just because of the fact that they tend to have lower levels of empathy. Um, but you know, it's kind of tricky saying that they would always do something because there's so much variability in behavior depending on the situation. All right. So, uh, incidentally, if you're interested in the stuff we talk about today, uh, you should know that ECU has a whole uh, clinical health PhD program, so uh, Heather Littleton, for example, is one of our faculty who uh, all she does is study stress and coping and how that impacts health. So there's a stress and coping laboratory that she has upstairs where she studies these things. So if you are, if you are really interested in this, there are lots of opportunities to get involved in research and talk to some of the people who are really experts uh, in this area. So we'll begin by just uh, defining what we mean by stress. So we all kind of have an idea of what stress is. It feels bad. But uh, to be a little bit more precise, we'll say that it is a subjective feeling that is produced by events that we perceive as being uncontrollable and threatening. So, of course, some events are more likely to cause stress than others. So you do have to look at the specific type of, of event. But another thing that we'll see as a recurring theme throughout today's lecture is this notion that people's perception of the events is really what's important. Oh, I forgot to come and get you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. So you, you can catch up on, on this stuff uh, at the end if you want. We, we only got one slide in here. All right, so, um, and as we'll see, there can be a, a whole bunch of different things that can end up causing people stress, ranging from really major traumatic events to just the little things that get on your nerves. So the events that cause stress are technically referred to as stressors. And so uh, these are typically uh, events that make people feel really overwhelmed, like they just can't cope with it or they can't manage their lives because of these events. And a lot of times stressors produce uh, what are called opposing tendencies. <clears throat> so this is when um, you have different motives that uh, are pulling you in, in separate directions and you can't really satisfy both of them at the same time, which results in some really negative feelings. For example, uh, if you really want to do well on an upcoming exam, but you either don't want to spend the time studying because you know, studying can be not the most fun thing in the world, uh, or you just can't spend enough time studying because you have a job or you have other classes that are really monopolizing a lot of your time. And so you can see the opposing tendencies here because what you want to do uh, in one aspect, you want to do well on the exam, <coughs> that's conflicting with some other aspect of your life. Uh, 
another example would be uh, if you really want to go out on a date with some person, but uh, you're just afraid to ask them out because you are maybe a little shy, you're worried about being rejected by that person, and so again, you have conflicting motives. You, you want to go out with this person, but you don't want to get rejected. And so that can cause people to experience some anxiety. So, any questions about this so far? And we'll talk about uh, more specific types of stressors in just a few minutes. Alright, so there is a specific type of uh, stress response that people have. And this happens at the basic biological level. So, for one thing, uh, there's a startle response. And this is almost a type of reflex that can initiate a stressful experience. Uh, I'll give you an example in a second. And then you see an increase in heart rate and an increase in blood pressure. And there are other symptoms that go along with this response, like uh, sweating or sweaty palms. And so that startle response usually comes in when you realize that uh, there's something in your life that's going to produce one of these opposing tendencies. So, for example, uh, realizing that you forgot about some paper that's due tomorrow for one of your classes. When you come to that realization, you think, oh my gosh, I have to do that. Uh, so there's that startle response, and then your body's sympathetic nervous system kicks in with that kind of fight or flight response, which is uh, what you see with these symptoms here. <clears throat> right. And then you might experience some of those opposing tendencies, like trying to find enough time to actually work on that paper. Okay, so uh, the stress response has also been referred to as the uh, general adaptation syndrome, or GAS for short. I like to tell my classes that one easy way to remember this is think stress gives you gas. <laughs> you guys are way more amused by that than my freshmen were. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, the first stage of the general adaptation syndrome is alarm. So that's really the equivalent of that startle response that I mentioned just a second ago and that other way of thinking about the stress response. So, uh, like I said, that's that fight or flight syndrome, increased heart rate. Your body is gearing up to face a threat. And of course, fight or flight can lead you to deal with threat in different ways. You can either face it head on, fight, or you can escape. But either way, it's adaptive to have things like uh, an increased heart rate that um, increases the uh, response speed that you would have. So let's say, for example, we take a more uh, primitive situation. You're confronted with uh, an angry animal right, out in the wild. You're ancient human being. Well, you can either attack that animal and try to neutralize it, or you can run like hell. Right? Either way, it helps to have your body geared up to face that threat. Right? Uh, so the next stage in the general adaptation syndrome is resistance. So your body's prepared and it stays at these elevated levels, so increased heart rate and so on, for a while, at least until you can deal with that threat. And while this is happening, your body is using up a lot of its free energy reserves. So you're burning more calories than you normally would. And so if this resistance stage continues for an extended period of time, uh, people can enter this final stage called exhaustion, in which their resources of energy are really depleted, and you just feel wiped out. And there have been studies showing that uh, during this exhaustion phase, uh, people have an increased risk of illness. 
So their immune system is really weakened because the resources that it usually uses to fight off pathogens have been monopolized by this fight or flight response. And so one thing that uh, you'll see is a lot of times after final exam week, people will be more likely to uh, come down with something because their resources have really been depleted. Uh, I know a lot of people just burn up a lot of energy cramming for finals. They've got papers that are due. And so it's a very stressful time. So, any questions about the general adaptation syndrome? All right. So next, let's, let's talk about some of the different types of uh, stressors. So some of the worst can be uh, major life events. So I just want to ask you all, what do you think some of the most stressful things that can happen to a person are? Getting married. Okay, yeah, so getting married can be really stressful. You can have a change in your living arrangements. Uh, the wedding itself can be a big source of stress, all the arrangements for that. What else? Okay, did you say uh, paying bills? Yes. Okay, yeah, so I know that. Uh, that may not be a major life event, but it's something that we'll talk about in just a little while. It's more of a daily hassle. Having children. Um, yeah, having children, that's another one. So you'll notice both, both of these, getting married and having children, can be perceived as positive life events, but they can still cause a lot of stress because of uh, the fact that they introduce a lot of change into someone's life. And of course, uh, for the mother in particular, there's a lot of physical stress involved with being pregnant and giving birth. Um, what else? I saw some hands up right yes. here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, okay. what were you going to Yes, have losing someone. Yeah, yeah, death in the family. That's one of the most uh, stressful ones. Uh, your textbook lists out a few of these. Mm -hmm. A divorce. Yeah, yeah, going through a divorce or even having... Um, your, your parents, some of those parents get divorced, that can be really stressful too. Yeah, so these, uh, yeah. Getting a job? Okay, yeah, so when you when you graduate, that can be a good thing. You finally get fenced with college, but then you've got to go out on the job market and, and fend for yourself. And that, that can be kind of stressful because uh, you have all that pressure to get a job. And a lot of times that involves a big change in your living situations. You might have to move to another town, leave all your friends behind. So... Uh, yeah, we mentioned a lot of these, so uh, these are just some of the top major life events that cause some of the most stress uh, among people, according to these surveys. It's death of family or friends, as we said, um, getting divorced or having parents get divorced. I believe this was a study of college students. Uh, one that we didn't mention that uh, can be really stressful is uh, having to serve jail time. So essentially losing a lot of your freedom. It causes major interference with someone's life. They can't make it to classes if they're enrolled in college. They can't make it to their job. Um, uh, serious injury is another one. That's one I had to deal with over the summer, having that open heart surgery. That was pretty darn stressful. And uh, then we also mentioned marriage. So those are just, again, some of the top stressors. And you can look in your textbook. There's a table that lists these out by uh, how stressful people report them as being. It's kind of interesting to just look through those. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, there have been a lot of studies showing that when people suffer uh, through a lot of these major life events uh, and experience higher levels of stress, they're more likely to become sick. And this has actually been shown by both correlational studies and by true experiments. So this is, of course, important because there's that limitation with correlational studies where you're hesitant to say that there's a cause and effect relationship. But uh, what they've done is actually uh, expose people to, I may have mentioned the study before, but they'll expose people to the common cold virus uh, when they're under different levels of stress and see how likely they are to actually succumb to the virus rather than to have their immune system fight it off. So, uh, and of course they monitor these people to stay within ethical guidelines, but uh, it is pretty well accepted that stress causes a weakened immune system. So, any questions about this? Alright, so another thing that we 